I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru. And I'm Bryony. And it's the final day of Computex. We're about to go back to Nangang to sweep up a few people we haven't yet had the chance to see. It's been a busy week. Uh, I've been to Computex a few times in the past, over the past few years. Bryony's first time. Uh, so I'm going to ask Bryony a couple of questions. Overall impressions? Um, really, really good. I like the city itself. Taipei seems very nice. Everyone's very friendly. Um, I've met so many people this week. <laughs> it's been really awesome to talk to all the uh, people on the stands, the people who've got like the real inside info on the newest products. Um, and it's just been really exciting to see everything that's on offer. Um, I was expecting more new and exciting things. Right. Then that, that, okay. I'm glad you said that. We, we haven't kind of primed this because I wanted to get the impressions fresh. I expected to arrive at Computex this year, 2018, as of other Computexes with this is the new stuff that has is like launching today. And instead it's Q3 and maybe Q4. Uh, the number of times, I don't know what's going on. Impression for you? Yeah, it does seem that most of the things, they were like, oh, this might even be next year as well. Mm. It, was, it wasn't, it was either <clears throat> Q3, Q4 or next year, we don't know when, uh, it's uh, a concept. <laughs> and the problem with, Q4, oh, sorry, the problem with next year, obviously 2019, is CES 2019 is like the first week. So if they actually mean CES, I mean, yeah, it's next year, but it's effectively week 53 of this year, but could be CES, could be next Computex, and no, spread. Uh, let's not moan, oh, you know, we're white Europeans, let's not moan about the weather and the heat because it just gets, you know, we're in a nice air conditioned hotel room, yeah. go outside, it's work. Uh, Nangang itself, very busy, very noisy, and the videos, my voice is ruined. It's just, the noise, the doof, doof, doof. If I'm looking at an RGB keyboard, do I really need whatever junglist bass music? Yeah, there was uh, quite a lot of noise from uh, the events and things going on around. Quite a lot of stands had some loudspeakers and things on, which didn't make it great for- uh, Yeah, as we're transi transitioning through one yeah. booth and you walk past, a whoa. My observation as someone that's been taking photos and doing video during Computex to people exhibiting products is white light, white background, you get better photos of products. We're trying to do you a service in that respect. It's just a thought. Uh, let's go with the big question. Best product of the show for you? Um, there was three products. It's quite hard for me to choose between which one I think is my favorite. I think the real standout one was the uh, Evolve X on the Fantex. From Fantex, yeah, at the Fantex. higher, yes. I think most people were pretty impressed by that case. People yep. were saying, yo, yeah, well, check out the Fantex. Um, yep. See what they've got. So yeah, that case was really something different because a lot of stuff we've seen at the show seems to be the same, almost, I don't want to say Derivative. Pasted, but De yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see there's not that much that's like really new, whereas Fantex with that case is quite a few new ideas we haven't seen before. Um, and also the price as well was really good. 199 and yeah. Fantex has a history. That they've done this the number of their cases. They come in at say 80 pounds in the UK, which is 80 euros, $80, frankly. Uh, and it, it sets a new benchmark. Uh, I have to say, it doesn't seem to affect Corsair. Corsair makes the weather for themselves, but other case manufacturers have to respond. It's really pleasing to see. We can now see really quite decent budget cases for 50 quid. Uh, 80 pounds gets you something well worth having and of course you can spend more. But the market for the 100, 150, 200, uh, you've really got to have something special. And that Fantex, that set a benchmark. I mean, there were people doing videos sort of saying best case of 2018 and such. Like, they probably, they may well be correct, yeah. but bold statement. And yeah, that was very good to see. Uh, that was also my standout product. I've also got a couple of moans. Uh, Two more products. Um, yeah, so a couple of peripherals, so <laughs> something that Leo probably wasn't the most impressed by, but on the Cooler Master stand, the M850 keyboard, it was the real expensive one. It was like $200, I think, maybe two, yeah. $250. I, I thought my, my memory says 229, but yes. 229, yeah. But expensive, no two ways about it. But it looked good, it really looked good. Yeah, it was very impressive and it had the aimpad technology as well that I haven't seen uh, with where using the linear Cherry MX switches, it could detect how much pressure you have oh, through the keys. Was that the infrared where it detects as the yes, keyboard? Right, okay. Yeah. Now you see with, with keyboards, my, my interest in keyboards, uh, just, this is just a confessional. Uh, mechanical switches, for me, I like mechanical, they're fine, but I like them quiet. So uh, MX Silent, that works for me, and then the differentiation between the other ones, as far as I'm concerned, they're silent, and there's varying degrees of noisy. And my interest, it drops off, that's, that's 
which is why I don't do peripherals. I'll be the world's worst peripherals reviewer. Uh, but this was infrared. Now we've seen infrared in an optical in the past where it's got a chopper on the bottom of the key. So as it goes down, it chops. Uh, they use them in uh, internet cafes in the Far East where they're afraid of drinks as so waterproof because it's cutting light. This was, as the key approaches the infrared, it's detecting the, the decrease. I guess it's like a parking sensor. In miniature. Yeah, in a way. Uh, that, uh, that makes sense as to how it would work. Right. Really. And uh, uh, so it's it's kind of it's detecting pressure, but not through pressure, but as the key approaches. So, yeah, uh, I use... And the, it was to do with steering, wasn't it? If you're doing a steering yeah, game. Yeah, basically it would work really well with racing games. Yeah. That's the main thing I can think of. Yeah. It would probably give you more control, I guess, with other games as well, because it was on like mm. the, that WSD area. Yep, yep. Um, but, yeah, I thought that was really something new it's something different yep. um, they're trying to move forwards with yep. keyboards and okay keys. yeah I, I was also intrigued by that so we're on the same page and your third product uh the third thing i liked it's a bit of a silly one but it was actually a headset stand on the msi the msi the dragon <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a little bit uh lost on this one i guess it's just <laughs> but it was a headset stand it had oh. wireless charging which i thought is a good useful feature that's but it good also yeah. had, they were calling it the lucky box it's a little tube and it had holographic uh, yeah. technology in it so using the software you could upload your own logo yeah um, they had the little lucky dragon in there yeah uh, but it also is functional as well so you could put on like your cpu temperature yeah. gpu temperature but now you see to my mind I, I i get it was cutesy i get that i do uh in a similar way to azus was showing up i'm not going to try and do the names because they were just unpronounceable ryogen or some such uh two all-in-one liquid coolers they're showing two 240 models that they're, they're they're doing them in 120 240 240 360 and they seem to be the same thing except they've got uh, a round pump top and uh, sort of an angular pump top i think it's the same hardware inside but they're using the technology they've used with some of their really high motherboards where it's got like a little lcd screen on it and you can therefore use it to either display in their case obviously a zeus rog logo or if comes for review, I'm sure it'll have a Kit Guru logo, or you can have a little picture or something. It's cutesy. Yeah. Um, it can be functional. Yes. Uh, but, you know, will you be looking there to check your CPU temperature or not? Mm, remains to be seen. Uh, I, I kind of quite... But for me, the thing is, the fact I remember those products, I expect there to be a dozen other products that, that drive those into the background. And the headset stand is the sort of thing I expect to walk past and kind of go, oh, and then it's yeah. gone. And the fact it's your third best product, <laughs> you see that like to it me. Because it's silly. It's just it's okay. something different. <laughs> Understood. But the fact that the other products, um, my gripe for Computex 2018, uh, we knew in advance there wouldn't be any major launches. We've got some processor stuff I'm going to bang on about shortly. But uh, Nvidia has just said it's not happening. You know, new graphics chips, forget about it for some good while. Uh, we're hoping hoping that E3 is going to give us some solid info and a date or some such, and then we can get on. But Computex, it wasn't lined up. They didn't bring anything out of the bag and say, you know, we said we weren't there. Here it is. Didn't happen. No. Uh, so that was uh, a thing. So we're back once again to RGB lighting. Have you seen enough RGB lighting? I've seen a lot of RGB lighting. Have you seen enough RGB or do you want more? I'm trying to think what else they could possibly RGB. I know there is yeah. a, a cable coming out with RGB lighting. Yeah, we saw some modded PC yeah, with modded a, PC a, a cable. Trying to... Well, RGB it's not, cable. strictly speaking, it's not an RGB cable. It's like a, a cover that clips over the cable. So it, yeah. clips, it clips to the combs of your individual cables, but it makes it look like it's, but, but yeah, RGB. This is the ATX main power cable from your power supply. Uh, so yeah, we saw that and I thought, well, look, actually it was all right, but I, w I wasn't blown away. No. I was more blown away in terms of style and sophistication by the wood products that EKWB were showing. They were very nice. Which were just very fine pieces of woodwork, but uh, utterly irrelevant in a sense, because they, they were non-functional, they were just cosmetic. And very expensive as well. And very expensive. But the, the fact that it's like, oh, the wood, I remember, rather than the RGB cable, it's like, these should not be fighting in for, no. for a different part. Shouldn't be. Um, but the thing about cable, just before I came out, I reviewed the Cooler Master, probably Master Case H500M, which is a variant on previous H500s, the P and the Mesh. And it's got addressable RGB, ARGB. And I managed to burn out the RGB controller and I didn't understand what I'd done. 
uh, Cooler Master is fairly clear that what I did was I plugged the ARGB connector into an RGB connector on the motherboard. The ASUS motherboard I was using has both types of headers, two of each, uh, which is really good going because most motherboards you might have one or possibly two, two of each type, good going ASUS. And it would seem I plugged it and that burns because it feeds juice to the duh. Now here's the thing with this. I, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing because I do this for a living. If, if I can connect the wrong thing and it hasn't got a great big make sure you connect it to the right place, then am I the only one that's going to do this? I mean, surely there must be others who are going to do this. ARGB, RGB standards. There is, it, it's just a nightmare. I think there needs to be a industry standard or at least some clear information when you open a product as to which one you meant to plug in. I mean, even if it's just, you know, Waldock, for God's sake, man, don't plug big red X, don't do that. I have to say also the Cooler Master user guide for that particular case was tiny and, and it was not a good user guide. And I know Kit Guru readers have often said, when I'm complaining about this, user guides, who needs a user guide? Noob. It's like, well, I've got the smoke and the burned out product to that, okay? <laughs> Um, so, uh, so a decent user guide and a, and a clear picture is a delight, uh, but the standards, but my concern, and Brian is quite correct, that uh, if all the manufacturers could get together, say your mystic light will work with your aura and everything just works, um, because this takes us on to uh, the Corsair software. Uh, yes. uh, now, this is peripheral territory, so over to Bryony. Uh, so they have updated, um, most people know like the IQ software is brand new mm. um, and it has been a little bit buggy but I've been told there is an update so when I get back home I'm going to update and hope that fixes my issues um, and they've also brought out some RGB RAM. Uh, well they've updated the RGB well, RAM. Well updated yeah. the RGB <clears throat> RAM. To Pro, they've called it Pro. Yeah, so um, it basically means that it's going to have more functionality with the new IQ software. Uh, so it's like direction, speed, uh, whereas at the moment I think it's, well, there's still plenty of options, uh, many, but there's many. even more options, like you can control each stick individually and mm. there's more LEDs. Different on. zones and patterns gone. But the thing is that when I see that, my immediate thought is, is it going to work? If you have an entire, to use the term, Corsair ecosystem, just Corsair end to end, will it work flawlessly? Uh, and your immediate thought is, well, it might, but good luck because things go to sleep, things wake up and, and it's just lap of the gods. And of course, it's managing firmware updates and such like as yeah. well. So th that's all going on. If you have in the case of Corsair, and this is not hitting on Corsair, it really isn't. If you've got Corsair everything and Corsair software, it ought to work because that's how it should be. Then Windows will update and then, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. What happens if you have a Cooler Master case with Cooler Master software, with Corsair memory, with Corsair peripherals, with insert name here of some other brand of rgb uh, as we've discussed, uh, and a Zeus liquid cooler? You could very easily have three sets of software running. That'd be quite reasonable. The chances are all going to work nicely together. It often does, and I've definitely had experiences where the different RGB softwares interact with each other. Mm. Because I'm testing different peripherals all the time, or mm. have RGB lighting. Um, I've got Corsair software running for the fans and things mm. in my case. And yeah, often you'll find it normally sorts itself out in the end, mm. but you'll be like, oh, maybe this isn't doing what I want it to do. So it would be nice that uh, RGB lighting, I think, is quite a nice feature. I don't think it's going away anytime. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, it's, it's here. I mean, yeah. up to, until they get like an AR thing where it's basically in front of your eyes and they haven't got to put it in this. No, 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 it's here to stay. I mean, I've, I've, that, that fight is lost. Uh, we can agree. Um, should we talk about processors? Yes. Right, yeah, so we yeah. did the AMD uh, press conference on, I think it was the Tuesday. AMD does this every year. They, they kind of bounce a press conference on you at the last minute. And we thought we knew what we were expecting, which was a whole load of we sold loads of laptops, which in fairness to AMD in recent years, they haven't been able to say that because would you buy an AMD mobile solution? Not really. No. I mean, it's Intel wall to wall and it's Intel and then with NVIDIA graphics for gaming. And AMD does now have some proper laptops. If you want a laptop, you can buy AMD for sensible money that does what you want and it's a reasonable choice. So they're very happy and fair play to them for that. Uh, and then they're talking about seven nanometer graphics, but they're talking about the professional graphics. And you go, well, that's reasonable. And they're talking about Epic, which is a server chip up to 64 cores. And they later on then went on to say, Epic will be moving to seven nanometer, which uh, for the server market should be very big news. Uh, and then the kind of close to the end, 
they said that the new Threadripper was coming. We knew that 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer die shrink, just like uh, second gen Ryzen 7. And you're expecting a slight bounce in clock speeds, but the same core counts. Uh, and then they, as everyone now knows, said, and of course, 24 core and 32 core, and it's like big whoop and yay and, and happiness. Yeah, there was a lot of excitement in the crowd when that was announced, actually. You, you need to be really cautious about that, though, because we're sat, we're towards the back, but in the middle, and the whoop, you can hear the whoop actually is at the periphery of the room, which is where all the PR people are stood and all the marketing people, and they're trying to get us all going with the whoop. <laughs> so actually, the applause starts there. But there was genuine excitement. It, it was genuinely proper news. But no, we did not go whoop and yay. Not, not. We don't do that. But <laughs> in a sense for AMD, this was not a difficult thing to do. And I do not wish to belittle the AMD engineering staff. Socket TR4 does epic. They call it something different. But the same socket. So they, uh, apart from electrical differences, support for ECC and such like, and, and the the processor has a different substrate and such like. But in principle, you can take an Epic and put it in a Threadripper board. Um, you just have to trick the motherboard to at least acknowledge what you've done. So for AMD to do it at the factory is entirely doable. Uh, for me, the impressive thing is that X399 chipsets support the new processors. It's not one of those, you need a new chipset to even, you need a new BIOS, but you don't need a new chipset. We were subsequently told by ASRock, and I hope I'm not betraying any confidences uh, because we weren't told it's a confidence, that uh, any plans for X499 have been either parked, cancelled or whatever. So the Threadripper platform is X399. So great, I've got one of those. I'm, well, I've got a few of those, but I'm using one of those, so I'm happy. Update my BIOS, I can drop in a processor. This is good. I'm currently using the 12 core, the 1920X that runs to 3.6 gigahertz or something. So what I was expecting was to get a new processor at some point for a lot of money. And that would hopefully run to around 4 gigahertz, 10% yeah. improvement. I'm happy with that. More power. I've got good cooling, so I'll be happy. And now I've got the option of 16, 24, 32 core, but I don't know what the clock speeds are. Yeah, it would be interesting to uh, see how well they perform with like different programs and things. Obviously more cores, but it's not going to be that exciting if the clock speed is Well, I, in my case, slow. Adobe Premiere is the thing. The, I, the idea that gamers are going to, I mean, I'm sure some gamer will rush out and buy a 24-core, 32-core processor, although Lord knows why you do it, but more if you do... More sense. <laughs> and we look forward to your experiences, because um, everyone's complaining games are not highly threaded. Well, there you go. But... Uh, my guess, and this is where I'm into guesswork, is at the moment Threadripper turbos uh, to three point towards four gigahertz, but not four, you can overclock it to about four gigahertz. They really don't overclock well because they come out of the factory pretty much at the limit. And my guess is that the new processors are gonna run up to around three gigahertz, looking at what Epic does. And therefore, you're gonna have to decide, do you want even more cores at lower speed, or do you want the same number? I mean, after all, 12 and 16 cores not to be sneezed at. You know, I'm doing well here. Um, but, you know, approaching 4 gigahertz, and it's not going to be everything you can eat. You're going to have to decide. I'm going to have to decide, actually. Um, I just hope I haven't got to pay for it, but I probably shall. That's going to be painful. Um, I hope I don't buy the wrong processor. And the reason that AMD did this, of course, was that the day before, well, probably got the timeline wrong. Anyway, the day before AMD announced this, Intel had told us they would be producing this year a five gigahertz, 28 core processor. Uh, and they demonstrated this with Cinebench to demonstrate 28 cores at five gigahertz. The performance was enormous. I mean, obviously it would be. And it just seems like um, rubbish. It, it seems, Intel has the technology to do this, but Intel quite clearly is looking at AMD and has responded. Now, someone pointed out, how, how recently was it we were limited to eight or 10 cores for a lot of money, and then we've gone to 16, and then we went to, you know, um, we've gone up and up, and here we are, choice of 28 or 32 cores soon. But the Intel processor, I simply don't believe that this is gonna be as marketed. I'm sure Intel can produce a processor that will do this thing because they've got the Xeons. But to get to five gigahertz, a wise man suggested to me you might be looking like minus 100 degrees C in order to get the clock speeds that you want, which obviously is not conventional no. cooling. 
And another person was suggesting that you might be looking at about a thousand watts of power draw. Now that's not impossible, but those are very big numbers. And those Xeons cost like 10,000 pounds. So for desktop, 5,000 pounds? That's quite a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <clears throat> and it requires a new motherboard with, and I saw somebody did a video, I'm not gonna say the name out loud, suggesting it's a gigabyte motherboard. Now we were at the gigabyte, uh, well it's not a booth, it's a floor in the 101. I did not see that motherboard there. They apparently did, so I don't know what's going on there. I'm quite convinced that whatever the maker motherboard is that was used for that, it was not a gigabyte. But you're basically looking at a Xeon socket, so therefore a new platform for the desktop, six channel DDR4 memory, and a processor that they will have to cut in price if they can make it to 5,000 pounds. It's just great. A thousand watts power draw minus 100 degrees C or something. There's no part of that that makes any sense. Anyway, <laughs> that's where I stand on it. It's just like. Well, I just think uh, it's interesting to see what competition does. <laughs> it's a, uh, it brings us ridiculous amounts of cores, it seems. But uh, yeah, I don't know whether it's going to mean anything for the market, well, the mass market anyway, surely not. Well, because. indeed, I mean, because theoretically, as they did with the 18 core, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10 core, where they filled in all the steps along the way. You know, can we really imagine that if they produce this 28 core, and I really have to honestly say if, I know they said they will, but if they produce the 28 core on a commercial basis, surely they won't do the 26, 24, 22, and 20 as well, because that would be just what? Um, I mean, they'd have to have armed security guards around them. Uh, so you'd have a product stack that went 28, 18, 16, 14. It'd be, it would be the strangest, well, not the strangest thing ever, but very, very strange. So I, uh, anyway, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. It's competition that's done it. But I truly think in this case, competition has driven Intel mad. I honestly <laughs> think it's just pushed them over the edge. Yeah. Um, Mind you, that is quite funny to see, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So a very strange Computex. We had chipsets before Computex. We have not really had a whole mass of new motherboards supporting that. These are the lesser chipsets, all the 450s and such like. We've seen some motherboards that are not particularly exciting because they're just slightly lesser versions of existing. We've had some processor talk, nothing on the graphics front, just nothing. No, absolutely nothing. Uh, there was some new graphics cards from... <laughs> Oh, ASRock. ASRock, uh, yeah, ASRock. bring out an RX. Uh, ASRock's going to uh, do AMD, Vega. but uh, really the news there is ASRock's going to do AMD in Europe because they're going to do them in the Far East anyway, and they were told that they could do them in that mark, but so they're going to do it. But they were, they were reference design. Yeah, there was nothing too special about no. them, some black cards with <clears throat> ASRock stickers on, really. No, so we shall see. Um, I, I was actually looking around at water block compatibility with um, Vega graphics cards a week or two ago, and... Uh, the water blocks I could find were compatible with the, uh, the 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 original factory cards, and then when you move on to the aftermarket ones from Sapphire and such like, uh, they're not compatible. Uh, and I couldn't find any of those original graphics cards on sale. Uh, they kind of been sold out. They've moved on to the uh, to the uh, aftermarket ones. So uh, in a sense, if Asrock's going to now bring out, the, in a way, it's kind of a, a step back almost. But we shall see. But if they come out, they're sensible money. Then okay. Uh, but it's quite good to see someone that we actually know entering the graphics card market. Uh, that That's novel. Uh, what else didn't we say? So no, RGB. And uh, in that sense, it's been a strange show. But it does seem that we have an awful lot to look forward to in the next few months uh, throughout yeah, the rest of the year. Yeah, lots of releases. They're going to be very busy with reviews, I think. <laughs> yep. The next next couple of months leading up to Christmas. Yep. Yeah, lots of new stuff coming uh, out. And certainly they're going to be showing a bunch of new stuff for um, CES 2019 as well. Uh, so it, it's been strange. It's been a show where we've seen an Asus ROG power supply. Uh, we've seen some actually quite nice monitors. But the, the trouble with monitors in particular for me is you see them under show lighting conditions, you can tell almost nothing about them. I and mean, they're terrible conditions for looking at a monitor. You have to get it into a, a decent environment to use it. Um, so some of those monitors that I've seen, none of which had a model code I can remember. The model codes were just Alphabet spaghetti. Uh, PGs, twos, something, something UQ. Something, yeah, yeah, lots that, of numbers yeah. and letters. <laughs> there, 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 uh, there was some monitors that looked really good, uh, but till we actually get them back to base and actually give them a try, don't know. 
Uh, there was the thunderous Asus ROG laptop for £5,000. Yes, a very expensive, up to 128 gigabytes. Yeah, that, well, it's currently 64. An but they're, oh. they're, they're, what they're saying was that the uh, memory manufacturer has just doubled the density of the DIMMs. So currently 64 gig, but with the double density DIMMs, one, and the laptop can support it, it's just the memory wasn't available. I mean, what 128 gig of memory does for you versus 64, apart from up with the price further uh, yeah. yes that would be special but uh yeah uh, a five i mean we, we we've seen msi titans at four grand five grand laptop why not i mean if you spend as well. all <laughs> Some the way will buy it <laughs> very true yes right if you make it they will come this yeah. is this is very true uh so there we have it i think that, that wraps us up yeah so uh if you like this video thumbs up if you don't thumbs down you want to if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button. We'll alert you to more videos as they become available. I'm Leo Warder for Kit Guru. I'm Bryony. Thank you very much for watching.